All right, guys, welcome back to the Project Kit Fox Garage. I have some new hardware in hand here. This is the new shock wheel design, specifically really for the Kit Fox and planes up to about 1,600 pounds. So the original setup I had on my Kit Fox um, was the LSA version. So it had a, a, a gross weight setup for about 1,320 on that setup. So these are a little beefier. And it has a little bit different design in that, if you can see, when it's going to be mounted, the shock's going to be tilted in a little bit. And what that allows us to do is put this 29 inch bush wheel on without touching the shock, without using any spacer. So uh, much cooler design, eliminates a little bit of weight in getting rid of the spacer. Um, so I'm going to go down, put these on the airplane and uh, go test them out for Behringer, see how they work, make sure we have you no know, clearance issues. Um, what they've done is a little different is on the crossover tube um, from the cat one caliper to the other, um, they've used an A and dash three style fitting with elbows in order to clear the actual shock assembly. Um, so usually we use banjo fittings on those. So that's a little bit different. So unfortunately I can't just swap the whole brake assembly over from the other shock wheel. Um, so I will have to disconnect the brake line to install these and then um, that will require re-bleeding the system. So a little bit more involved in the install than just bolting the shock on. Um, but I understand why they did that to get the clearance on the shock uh, assembly itself. So anyway, so I'm going to grab these, head down to the airport and we'll uh, get them installed and get some, some footage of them flying around and see how they perform compared to the lighter weight version. Um, I imagine they'll be a little bit stiffer just because they can carry more weight. Um, so we got to find that, that sweet spot again with the, uh, the air pressure adjustment on the shock tubes. So let's grab them. We'll head on down to the airport, get them installed. So we've got them installed, brakes are bled. So I did have to pull the brake line out a little bit right here. So if this was gonna be a permanent install, I'd shorten up the brake line, put a new fitting on there. So that's just to pull the brake line back away from the tire. It is really, really close clearance when this shock is fully extended between the tire and the, the black part of the shock mount. Right there, I've got contact with the tire really too close it gives you clearance on the red portion of the shock but the base it doesn't but it only does that while you're airborne so as soon as you touch down it squats down gives you clearance you can see between the tire and the shock and this is a 29 so this is the biggest tire you'd have on there so with clearance without a spacer you know we'll go fly it and see if we get any rubbing at all that's not going to work. So that's what we're testing to make sure that works. Set up on this side. It does sit a little bit higher. That's probably because I don't have them worked in yet. So they're still extended. Once those compress, you know, then the airplane will sit down lower. But um, it does narrow up the stance, the distance of the spacer. So I'll show you real quick what the spacer on the original shock wheel looks like. So that big block in there. So this end right here, it's over an inch spacer that's moving your whole assembly out. And what the thought process was, is if you're moving in this direction here, the further you move it out, the more angled lever action you're getting that's causing binding on the shock as it tries to travel up and down because you're not lifting in the plane of the travel of the of the shock you're lifting out here and you're putting a twisting force so the further the wheel is away from the shock 
the more you're going to get that. So by bringing it in that distance, we should get better um, articulation of the shock. So that's why one of the reasons behind the redesign, the other reason is uh, heavier duty to go up to, uh, I believe it's about 1,600 pounds. I'll get the final specs on that, what they want to advertise that at. All right, so here's the 27 and a half on there. It's got much better clearance to the pictures of the 29s. I think with a 29 inch bush wheel tire over there, we're gonna need to run a spacer. Um, but 27 and a half or an Alaska bush wheel 26 is gonna fit the new shock wheel, no problem. Um, other than that, I'm just gonna go see if they behave pretty much like the other ones. Um, they're down at 69 PSI right now in the shock. It's a little bit lower than what we were running in the smaller shock wheel. We were running about 80 in those. So I see where it sits. Just taxiing yesterday. Um, they do compress fully during taxi. Um, actually, not quite. You can see this rubber washer right here. That shows how far it compressed. Same thing on the other side. So I'll mount out some cameras, point it at the shock wheel. We'll go fly the pattern a little bit, do some landings and see how they do. So the new shock wheel design, I've been flying it a little bit. I did put a spacer in right down in here to move the tire out just a little bit. I had one that was just over a half inch and it's a little bit more than it's needed. You can see the space now. Put my hand between the tire and the tube. It was just touching barely occasionally without the spacer. So I think they're gonna come up with one that's about, oh, about half the size of this one just over a quarter inch uh, as the permanent uh, spacer for the 29 inch tires but putting the 29s on there and running this new shock what they did differently on this one is they angled the shock inboard towards the airplane and so when you take off the gear kind of hangs down and so having it angled this way when you land it's a, it's putting the pressure in the right direction um, before on the old shock wheel that was more straight up and down you get this weird oscillation back and forth between the two shocks when you land it on pavement. So this angled one, it doesn't do that. It's much, much more predictable on landing on asphalt. The dirt and grass landings were never an issue, but it's the asphalt landing. So having that angle and the, the uh, articulation of the shock go in the right direction 
it, it's much more predictable. I really like the way it's, it's behaving now, and the shock is doing most of the work over the spring gear. So we're gonna take it out. I've just been doing pavement landing, so that's what the problem was with the other one. So we're gonna take it out and go down, uh, hit the river a little bit and do some off airport and check out how they behave there. But I'm liking them. They're uh, much, much improved over the first version. You can see how angled the shock is by looking at it right there. And it sits a little bit higher with this setup and there's actually less pressure in it. So these can handle more weight. I'm not sure the specific on it. I think it was just under 1800 pounds where the other ones were set up for light sport. So these are more, they're specifically designed for the kit box to be perfectly honest. They took the feedback from the original pair and they made these just to go on the kit box and I'm real happy with them. All right guys, so wrapping up this new shock wheel design, it is a, a vast improvement. The original one, the shock was very straight up and down. And when, the, when you take off, the landing gear sags a little bit on uh, the Grove gear on the Kip Fox. So it, it kind of sat like this in the air. So when you went to land, the compression was in the wrong direction. The, the wheel wants to travel this way and the shock was angled kind of out on the initial impact. And so it kind of created a weird oscillation back and forth between the left side and the right side when landing on asphalt. So what Jan, the engineer at Behringer did is he angled the shock tube. So now when you take off and the wheel sags, it's still angled in slightly. And so when you touch down, the travel of the wheel is in the direction that the shock is angled. And that little difference right there made such a big difference in the predictability and the handling of the landing gear when landing on asphalt. Didn't have any problem on grass or dirt with the other one, but it was asphalt and the new shock wheel design, it's very predictable. The travel is in the right direction. It tracks straight. It's just a huge improvement. Um, so I really think overall, this is a, a really great option and a good compromise between the Grove gear by itself and the shock monster landing gear. Shock Monster Landing Gear is fantastic. It works great off airport. The big negative is the drag profile and the reduction in cruise speed. So by taking the Grove gear and the advantage of this cruise speed and adding suspension to it, you kind of get the best of both worlds. So if you guys are interested in checking out the shock wheel, get a hold of me. You guys can email me for information at bowandarrow at yahoo.com or you can call the number in the ad at the end of the video. But thanks for watching. You guys check out the shock wheel. This is really some good engineering here and uh, I'm real happy with it. And then it did that's all folks. <laughs>